very aromatic and you can use it as a seasoning dry it put it in your spaghetti sauce or your stews um, red bay has had unfortunately in florida there's all sorts of diseases with lots of places um, laurel wilt is hitting the bays uh, also this is the same family as avocado that can be hit too so in general a lot of the red bays are not living to adulthood or are not so anyways so you can just take one leaf okay uh, you can, and I have some more leaves um, that you can uh, also back up the uh, pavilions too that I collected earlier. I would dry. I would dry them. I think she was skip, but not not but wasn't fire ants. I think she did anyways. They weren't fire ants that she was in here. And over here we have wing sumac, and this will shortly have kind of. Uh, yellowish green flowers that will produce red seeds they're one of our favorite things to make a drink out of and we have frozen some so we will make a drink called sumac aid or indian lemonade it's one of our most popular um, drinks among kids and adults and this is not poison sumac poison sumac grows in swamps has white berries not found in this county so anyway this one's very much a sun loving dry upland type but it's abundant, open areas. You make the tea out of the, the, the berries. The berries. The berries. The berries. The berries. Wing. Wing. Wing sumac. Wing what sumac kind of because if you look at the, the stem here, you'll see like fleshy parts of the leaf here. They call that the wing. The wing. It has red berries and you'll see the berries. Here's the winging. The winging. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the right there I'm coming off the stem. Anyway, it has red berries, and you'll see them later because we'll have some of you make the drink, and you can all taste it. When do the berries come out? About September, October. September, October. Yeah. I feel like you might have yeah. one of these that I have. And they are common and abundant, and I just collect them, throw them in the freezer, and then throughout the year I'll make the drink. Um, we add cold water, cool water, let it soak for about a half hour. Let last we do it today like this and um, manipulate the berries and it has a wonderful flavor of drink. It's, it's, it's our, our most popular drink. Okay, here's one over here that um, Jill found some flowers. Where? Oh, okay. They're just starting, so they're not even actually, they're just thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. So here's one with the start of the buds. It's not open yet, they're, um, but they're getting close. Good. <laughs> oh, the, the good day? Okay. 
This is black cherry here. And black cherry is very abundant here, has red fuzz on the back of the midrib of the leaf. And I've actually, this is a young one, but I have taken the cherry, small cherries, and made a cherry pie before. But I wasn't very excited about it, so it wasn't worth doing any more. <laughs> yeah, some kind of. Yeah, this is sumac. This is not a mint. We, we, we don't want to collect these leaves, okay? We're not collecting this one, okay? Okay, so you can leave their, their leaves back on. And cherry does have cyanide, so wilted leaves will have cyanide. It's one something people that own horses or cows are very careful not having wilted uh, cherry leaves, um, limbs flying around in their pasture. But anyway, great, great wood, and the berries are very popular for birds. And it's a very pioneer type species. There's lots of cherry all over here. Um, and that's a cherry, black cherry, black cherry. The birds love the berries. Oh, this is the black cherry? Yes. Oh. I've been seeing the woodpeckers, especially heavy duty in them, the red-headed woodpecker, the red billy woodpecker, highly aided, and lots of berry eaters. There's some buds starting to grow. Okay, yeah, we saw we saw mm -hmm. one over there that had the actual a little further even further along than this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're moving along. Right now, this is not open to the general public, except for we park here at major big events. Down the road, hopefully, we have additional 40 acres that we recently acquired and has historical significance to our the battle here. But uh, right now, it's strictly parking we use, except for a little, um, yeah, you can, it's yeah, open. You yeah, don't, 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 yeah that's, thank you. I don't want to get hurt. Yes. What was it before the, the state on it? Um, a guy was running cows in there. So, it, yeah, so we just recently acquired it. Hopefully, eventually, we will open it up and have trails and whatnot, but right now, it's just a little, you park in here. <laughs> but, um, and a quick little visit here, and we have a lot of invasive exotics that we're working on getting rid of, getting, uh, getting a handle on before we um, open it up, too. Okay, is everybody here? Okay. We're going to, okay, just a second. <laughs> We're just going a short distance in. Yeah, there's right here. We're going to stop here first. So have you back up a little bit so people behind you can see. It's a big group. We can spread around. Step in the hole here. So this is stingy nettle, and I'll point it out. We're going to actually harvest it. So I'm getting the postal diggers. That's my brother. Okay. Okay. Fred, which one? Is right here right with the white there. flowers. <laughs> this has stinging hairs on it. That one right there is one too. And that one will sting and leave a red rash on you for maybe several days. Um, I've stepped on the bunnies. Have you? <laughs> so this, people like to get eradicated out of their out of their lawn, but I like leaving it. It's a great butterfly nectar plant, especially in dry season. It's one of the few things that's blooming. It's in the fam, same family as Quinzetia, the Euphorbiaceae family. It's not a real nettle. It's not a true nettle. Uh, another name for it is seven minute itch plant, but I've never had it only itch for seven minutes. <laughs> somebody, somebody called it that. Um, so anyway, tread softly, stinging at all. So you can yeah, actually yeah. take your gloves here. But actually, I have, I do have one. I, you, you know, I, I don't need it. I'll just use one. Later on, I might. This one is. Yeah. So we're going to dig. When you dig here, I actually dig. I dug quite a few earlier, um, so that we wouldn't have to spend the rest of the time digging them for to feed everybody here. This one might be. Might need to be tightened this one. Mm. Okay. I think this one, this whole soul digger, I think is, is it needs some work. Well, let's see if I can make it work. It, I think it needs to be some screws tightened. We'll have to have it repaired. Hmm. So you want to dig down alongside the stem, which is right here, and then you don't want to dig. You don't want to. Cut the root. It has a carrot-like root, and it's very aerobic exercise. <laughs> You've got to go down at least two feet, probably. And initially, the root is like a pencil, 
and then it gets bigger, like a tap root. Is that edible? It grows again. The root. Probably. I mean, I have it. I have it. Definitely. It's not an uncommon plant. Well, it's gonna be or something. Sounds edible. Be a spring farmer. Yeah. <laughs> in my ears. <laughs> well, no, that's right. Don't, don't worry about it. How do you get back? And then it's all sand. Why is this like dirt? Right here. Okay. Well, I need to go a little further down. All right. I see where it started. Yeah. 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 Ye
and I was watching a YouTube video. I mean, I've done it many times, but I was curious what the most recent videos show. So I was holding with bare hands and just slicing off the thorns, but I, I can't believe it. <laughs> Might have been a thornless variety, but anyways. I've heard of burning the thorns off. I basically will use gloves that I want to throw away afterwards. Leather gloves, they can't, the thorns can't penetrate. Using tongs, good, sharp parry knife, and get all those eyes, all those thorns off. And then I usually run through my rinse it, make sure there's nothing on it. So I have harvested them already for you and cut the thorns off. We're gonna saute it up. I put it in things like quiche. Another thing part of this is the fruit, the purple fruit. You can use, that's a wonderful thing to make jelly out of, but this is not the season. It'd be like winter, winter type when you might have the fruit. Prickly pear likes these kind of fields. Very common in Florida, very abundant in Florida. So, but again, it is a thorny plant. It's not everybody's favorite. And I actually have some extra ones that have thorns on them. If I can um, first come, first serve. If you want to, um, I can't promise that you won't get thorns on you. If you do, which I, I had some small thorns work their way into my hand and that's just over a few days, they'll be, the itching will be gone. <laughs> but anyways, there, no matter what I do, I always get a few hairs into my, that work your way into your skin. Um, so that's not, this is a great plan to eat, but you can also buy it in the grocery store without any thorns too. Do uh, any animals uh, eat it? Out here? Yes, uh, the, especially the fruit. The fruit would be like the Gover tortoise would eat the fruit. Um, out, that, in the southwest, the javelina. Uh, yeah. Right so uh, well, probably our wild, our domesticated wild, introduced wild pigs. They probably they eat everything. So they probably do. I'm sure they do too. All right. So we're gonna head back and go back into our nature trail now. I didn't let a family member. It's a daisy like family. Um, right here, a little white flower, yellow, lost some of its petals called Spanish needle. And this is uh, it right here, right here. Um, and I'll show you some white. This one, actually, there's some over here. Let me go over here. But right here, very common weed in Florida, but you can eat the young leaves if you cook them or salad. Make a Spanish needle. The daisy like flower. But Right now, my examples don't have all their petals. You can yeah. actually eat the flowers too. Oh, okay. Very common, very actually a very important butterfly nectar oh, source. So but people nectar. has needle-like seeds, Spanish needle. The seeds get on your socks, and you might be tempted to throw your socks away. <laughs> so it, it is a very um, seedy plant that um, people don't always care for at that stage. But it's abundant, and the young leaves you can either cook, put a quiche. I've made pesto out of this. Um, with pine nuts, which we'll look at the pine nuts later from here. Um, so anyway, the young leaves will be like right here. You can either eat them raw in a salad, or you can put them in a quiche, or you can put them in a pesto. So it's a common, abundant, lots of plant, lots of this around. So showing you, this is not one you eat, okay? But this is a medicinal plant. Anybody here have a toothache? This is called Hercules Club or toothache tree. And you can take a leaf, and it's an early form of Novocaine. It will numb. It will numb wherever you put it in your mouth. Um, and it's related to the citrus, the citrus family. Very citrus uh, smell to it. So anyway, it has thorns on it. Very characteristic thorns on it. But you can when you tear it, it smells very citrusy. So Hercules Club or toothache tree. Um, those are common common names. Um, this this is not part of that. No, this is all wild grape with no grapes. We have multiple kinds. We have multiple kinds of grapes, but they're, they're vital species. And we will. You can eat young grape leaves, like like this. And if you Greek heritage, you might make a little meat and rice dish and put it inside the grape leaf. We're going to try to um, point some out later that have some actual grapes on them. But the grapes are not grapes are not ripe yet. Anybody want to try a leaf? Can you? Uh, I would only try a teeny bit. It, it will it will numb wherever you're chewing. No, this is this is for numbing. Yeah. You know. Does it help with headaches too? Uh, I never. I don't think so. It's just your mouth. It doesn't go. It doesn't go to your head. So I, anytime you um, try something, you only want to try a little bit. Everybody might react differently. Oh yeah, that's strong. Yeah. That's really strong. I keep passing them back. Anybody else? Yeah. Very thorny compound leaves. 
Yeah. Again, may, if you have kids, make sure mom and dad are okay with yeah. you. Is the second word club? Hercules, Hercules club go, or man. toothache tree. Got it. I'm pretty sure you have some where you are. Anybody else? It's not Hercules. Hercules club or toothache tree. This is it. Yes. This is it's right here, very very thorny. And the giant small tail, it will lay its eggs on here and you might look at the, the butterfly caterpillars look like bird droppings. Of course they're really living. This is one of their host trees for the They ate duck. my mate. No, no, not not mate. They did not. It was another butterfly. They don't know mate. Oh, but it'll grow back. We have tons of maypops, so if you say half at it. Well, they, they will come back. They will come back. I promise you, they'll come back. We Anybody else? All right. We grow the toothache plant or buzz button. I'd have to see the Latin name to know what, which it, one they're, they're a little round flower. Man, super. Same as that, but even way stronger. Buzz button or toothache plant is another common name. I'd have to see the Latin name to know for sure. We, we got it at a nursery, a uh, um, organic. Yep. Natural Farms in Howie in the Hills. So, this is spider wart. Mm -hmm. What's this right here in my hand? It's uh, the Spanish, Spanish needle. needle. Spanish, Spanish needle. 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 What, what can you eat from this plant? That's the the young leaves. And what else? Oh, and, yep. the, and the young leaves. Young leaves. But it, it, you can see, it's right here, 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 it's right here. Why can't you eat the older leaves? They don't it's just like you eat older or spinach and older lettuce, awesome. they just taste more bitter. Yeah. You can eat them, you can eat them, but this would not be a good experience. And right, we're on the Fort King Road, and this is where the first shot of the battle, Major Dade, was shot here. You probably heard of Dade City, Dade County. This is all big, big battle, big impact at that time period, 1835. Buzz button. Buzz button. Another Toothache plant. But I would have to see the Latin name. You want to look at Latin names to compare, make sure it's apples with apples. Well, you can buy the seeds and buy the plants. All right, so this is spider work. You can eat the flowers, the young leaves, vegetation, uh, cut it up in a salad. Uh, it's a pretty plant, grows well in people's yards. Um, so spider work with a purple flower, the three petals. Yeah, Tradescantia is the genus. So anyway, common, younger growth is better, is better. Fish berry. Yeah, all partridge berry right here. Oh, it's a little... If you have it, if you guys have seen it, can you step back for the ones behind you? If you've already seen it, can you guys step back? And actually, here are the flowers. These two flowers will make one berry, which is interesting. It's a little unusual. Two flowers, but together they'll make one berry. So here's the flowers, here's the berry. Partridge berry. Here's some more flowers. Again, they will make one berry. So maybe some other things have been nibbling on them. It's a little vine. It's a vine. They grow yeah, little, little, little grow. Vine. So which ones? These are the leaves that go with it. Right here. Well, I was asking which leaves go with it. Right, right. The little round ones. I like it. Right here. Everybody seen it? Partridge berry. We're not going to eat it because I only see one berry so far. Oh, okay, but don't don't pick it unless you ask me, okay? Please. Okay. Can I pick a bee? Yeah, no, no, we're not gonna pick. I only <laughs> see two berries now. Okay, so the two white flowers? Yeah, and they will and there's one coming along, a green berry. They will produce one red berry, which is that. That's probably from last year's crop. Sure. Yeah. Here, Penny. I'll, I'll get it all right, partridge berry. Partridge is a bird that, we, like a quail, that no, yes, right. probably they would eat if they were starving. All right, we're going to go over here. I forgot to grab it out. I have some. It's not cold, but I have some.
Yeah, I mean, actually, I'm just, I think I'm, I'm going to find a more robust spot that has more of it. I'm pointing out meadow beauty, and I'm going to find this place that has better, more of it. This has young leaves that you can eat, lemony taste, but I'm going to find some more. I don't see enough of it here to make it worth our while. Well, actually, just a second. Maybe I can find some more in the back. Right here, right here, sorry. sorry. So actually, I'm finding more of it. If you want to taste it, this, you put it on your tongue, it's like a, you want to chew it, let it sit on your tongue, it should be a little burst of lemon. So if you want some, come up here, put your hand out. And you you can't just swallow it, otherwise you'll never get anything. Called Meadow Beauty, and that pink flower over there is, is part of the plant. Thank you. So if you got one, come back, um, go back, let the next person in line. Yeah, you want to chew it a little bit and let it sit on your tongue and it should be a burst of lemon flavor. It does have a pretty cool lemon flavor. Is it really sour? No. Can you guys taste it? Let me find another one. Chew it and then let it. So pine trees, which is, this is a young pine tree. You can take the pine needles. We're looking at a pine tree, right? Here, young pine tree, a big one in the background. You can take the needles and steep it, which we will later, and have a very rich vitamin A, vitamin C tea. Um, you also can take the, the seeds out of the pine cones, and that's pine nuts. And we want to get a chance to pine nut season is basically going to be pine cone season when they fall, which is basically September, October. Some fall prematurely. And when they fall prematurely as green pine cones, I, it's this time of year, they probably will not mature and open up. But a little bit later, they, if you catch them, you get them when they're green, the pine cones, and I'll show you some at the table there. Then you, you'll open up in a paper bag, and then you get all those pine nuts. The pine nuts are the same nut you buy in the grocery store, just smaller and a little more labor intensive to get out. And I'll show you later how to get them out. But, so anyways, that, that's a... Um, I'm probably mostly, I really like sand pine, which is a very short needle pine because it seems to be more flavorful, more citrus-like flavor. But uh, it actually has some long leaf that I harvested and some sand pine that will steep later and make a tea. So a lot, most everybody has pines very readily available. But this is not edible for us, but this is pretty. This is butterfly milkweed, very attractive to butterflies, especially monarchs. Um, far as the milkweed, uh, but anyway, in general, lots of butterflies, not today, it's like, they like to be in the sun, when the sun hits here, they might be on it, but that's butterfly milkweed, we're not eating their butterfly milkweed, all right. Yes, that's native. Right, the Mexican, yes, yes, that, that is native, it's okay. good, that's good for monarchs, it will not keep the monarchs here extra, um, the scarlet milkweed, I think the scarlet milkweed is the one that you don't recommend planting. It's a non-native. So we'll wait here, I'll make catch up, sorry. A lot of skunk vine right here, that's the one that I said you can cook the leaves and the non-native that we try to get rid of. That that stuff growing everywhere. Yeah. Anyways, I won't try to get too rid of it too much. Everybody catch up. A lot of grapes and skunk vine. This is our native Carolina jessamine, which is poisonous and does intertwine with some of our natives. So you have to be the reddish to the stem, um, opposite leaves pointed. Um, and this one, you do have to be careful to make sure you know your natives, the ones that are edible versus the ones that are, this is native, but it's not, not edible, it's poisonous. So it has the yellow flowers in the spring or winter months and um, it likes to intertwine with some of the ones that are native, that are edible. So let's see, do we have everybody? Not quite, okay. We're walking towards our old oak tree just to take a look at that and then we're gonna look for another plant that I have a, it's on the ground, it'll be easy to harvest hopefully. What did you just say a minute ago? Okay, right here I have Skunk vine, which is non-native, that grows everywhere that you can cook the greens. But I mentioned intertwined with the skunk vine is one called 
Carolina jessamine. And you have to be careful when you're collecting plants. It, that's a poisonous one. That you don't want to collect the Carolina jessamine. is very beautiful. has yellow flowers. This is it. Um, yeah, it looks like that one's actually, um, I don't think so. No, that's not. Okay. Okay. Yes, it is hard to tell. I'm looking to see. This one is not. This one looks like a smilax, actually. A young. So this is, um, right here is skunk vine. Right here skunk is Carolina jessamine that has a reddish stem. And ha that's the only way you can tell the red stem? Well, it has the opposite. Elliptical green leaves, see they're opposite. Very sturdy, leathery type leaves right here. Okay, the, here's the leaves. See, this, this is much more succulent type leaves. You typically a bigger leaf. Does not have the red on the stem. Um, that's the flowers for skunk vine. Skunk 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 that's very distinctive too. Poisonous. The jessamine, we're looking at jessamine and skunk vine all intertwined and frequently it's intertwined with another plant called smilax, which is edible. Two edibles in one. Jessamine is not edible, it is poisonous. Does it stay little? The, the leaves stay little? They stay pretty much, they always look like that. They don't get, yeah, they don't get big like this. Yeah. That's a pretty standard size. So small leaf, bad, big leaf, good. Well, yeah. and the red, red on the stem, red on the stem. Yellow, yellow flower in the winter months. Um, the skunk vine has white flowers and produces berries. But Salem produces berries too. Okay. It's just smilax. Like uh, we'll we'll find some better smilax later. No, for sure. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, no, no, no. I would rather just eat spinach and eat all the food. Me too. Too tough. So, we're going to find you can pick the leaves and it's edible. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, if you want a scent bar, if you want a leaf and smell, huh? it should smell like a like a wet dog or I don't know. So we're not eating. We're not eating them though. Okay. It okay. smells like a wet dog. I know, but yeah, it smells stinky. What is it? <coughs> it's oh, I know what it's going to Okay, smell okay, like. okay. I'll take some stink wine. You don't know what I've done. So much yeah, that does not smell good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. I was sticking it in his mouth. Oh. Hope it don't smell that bad when it's cooked. <laughs> Not that bad when you're pulling it at your house. Anybody else? Anyway, it's a smelly. You can cook it. It doesn't smell when you cook it. It's <laughs> edible. Yeah, you can eat it as a green. And it's non-native. Yeah, it's non-native. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Okay. Eat it up. This is blackberries. So if you guys want to pass this way, so the people behind you can see. Blackberries, you can keep going, keep going, keep going a little more so you can see, but the ones behind you can see. So blackberry has thorns. We don't have raspberry here. We have blackberry. Um, this is very, um, can, the fruit is like May, June, and you can dry the leaves, make a tea out of it. So blackberry, very common, native, and you can see that basically kind of has three very, the um, nation is very distinct and it has thorns on it. So we're not eating that, we're just looking at it, okay? That's a tea, tea or a berry. See how far that goes. I'm trying to see if I can find where he, uh, maybe I can. All right, well, forget it, forget it. I'll find a reason one. Okay, that one is green briar smilax, has thorns on it. You can eat the young tender shoots, but I can't get to the tender shoot. So I'll have to wait and find another one for you. Our Fort King Road you've been walking on, where 180 Seminoles ambushed 108 soldiers. And partway through the battle, they built this breastwork, or they call it redoubt. Not the original logs, but the original site. They did an archaeological dig here in the 60s, so they know. Um, so that's where the last battle, the last stand was for the soldiers. Only three soldiers survived. One got killed the next day by a Seminole, and only three Seminoles died. So we did an annual reenactment, the first full Saturday and Sunday in January, forever here for that. How do they know how many Seminoles there were? Well, that's from the report from the Seminoles. We don't have, that was, was handed down oral, his, oral history. So that's, that's all we have to go by. That they told us that three died and five, like five were injured. So but the 180 they, they knew? That's, yes, yes. And we, you know, this is sometimes we could find out when we were actually here, oh, it might've been 190 or, you know, but that's what, what was handed down to us from their different chiefs that were involved in the battle. 
Uh, above your head is oaks, lot, you know, lots of live oaks. And they have an acorn that you can soak and get the tannins out, open up the acorn shell, and use acorn meal and make a, add wonderful protein to cornbread. It doesn't have any gluten in it, but you could add it to different your bread muffin recipes, so which I, we have done regularly. Um, is there any of the group that has rounded leaves or they're in the white oak group, those are the ones that have the sweeter acorn. Turkey oak, laurel oak, water oak, they're all more bitter acorns that would not harvest them. No, I live under a southern live oak. Is that That's fine. Yeah, live oak is fine. These are all live. That's what I was... Swamp chestnut oak is my favorite in our area because it's really big acorns and it, and it has the sweeter acorn. Do you have to soak them? Really yes, you have to soak them. I, I take the shell off, get the acorn meat, I soak them, let the tannins come out, the brown, yellow color that comes in the water, and I keep doing that until there's no, until well, it's clear, until it's clear. Don't yes. you boil them? Otherwise, hmm? Do you not boil them? No, I don't. Okay. I just soak them. Okay. Yeah. And I, and it probably the, some, the Native Americans probably would have put them in the river, in a ba some kind of mesh bag, whatever kind of bag they made, and let the river do their job. Oh, yeah, but, yeah, I don't have a river to do that. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm just pointing out a few medicinal type plants. We're not going to sample them. This is in the St. Yellow, four yellow, like a cross. In the St. John's wort family, a lot of the St. John's worts are sold in herbal for herbal medicine. So you'll see this flower with four yellow petals as you guys come up. There's a couple of them. One of the St. John's worts, and I only heard it being used medicinally. But there, and there's a lot of them are European varieties. In that family, they use a lot for <coughs> herbal medicine. So if you haven't seen that right up here, the four yellow pellet, four Saint yellow John. petals. St. John's work. My family. son takes that every day. Okay. And I don't know if it's that one. It's probably another species. Yeah, we, we, he takes it in the pill form. No climbing, sorry, sorry. This is our oldest oak that we know about, maybe up to 400 years old, a live oak. People get married here regularly. This is our live oak that easily could be up to 400 years old. So we can't climb trees in the park, sorry, and everybody wants to climb. Freddie and Sam. Yeah, that, that looks like a fun one back. to do. Yeah. <laughs> People get married here. We're just pointing out the oak in front. Live oak, uh, our ancient oak, and it could be easily 400 years old. We don't know the exact age. We'd have to core the tree, which might introduce disease, so we're not coring the tree. Yes. But, um, anyway, it, it comes to life after rain because the resurrection fern is very vibrant and green, and that's actually pretty green today. Okay, um, we have an orchid on it, green fly orchid. There's another one called butterfly orchid. It's on the one that's in front of the visitor center at the museum. So they are, they are holes for many things on there, living on them. So anyway, a neat tree. Uh, I'll show you the, I'll show you the, it's not blooming, but I can show you the leaves of the green fly. The, the one we passed the, another one with the butterfly. Okay. Where am I? Here it goes. Um, it has grass legs. Let me see. No, I've seen it. Oh, here it is. Yeah. So right here, that's the green fly orchid leaves. It's going to have a whitish, oh, wow. yellowish flower, and it's more of a winter, winter bloomer, late winter. So, anyways, and our our butterfly orchid blooms in June. So that's the leaves of the other orchid. Yeah. Green fly orchid, very common, relatively very common orchid on the on the oaks. And the, the butterfly orchid, orchid is the only we only have one that we know of in our so that's not quite as common. All right. to where we have some residents and we also have, where our manager lives and where we have resident volunteers. If you didn't know that in the state park system, if you have an RV, you can live on site in exchange for 20 hours a week. You can live on site and get your complete hookup. And uh, Rich 
from somewhere here. He, he actually lives on site, so he has to work 20 hours. Yes, yes. So anyway, just letting you know, if you've never heard that, you, you can do 16 weeks at a time in one state park, then you can move to the next state park. But um, So we're going to be a little bit into their backyard, but I want to get one plant that I see abundance of. Well, this plant right here is called Creeping Cucumber. It has, it's in the squash family, has little tiny yellow flowers. And uh, I know there are cucumbers. i gotta, got to pick the right one. But um, okay, here we go. Mommy. So I'm going to let you come. I want you to show me what you're picking first. So this is in the squash family, Creeping Cucumber. You want to pick the cucumber, they taste just like cucumber. No. But you want to take one to have one they're light green. If they're dark green, you do not eat them, okay? That's the start of one. So anybody, I want you, if you walk around here, there's tons of yellow flowers. Show me your cucumber and then you may eat it. It's this vine right here. It has the yellow flowers. It kind of looks like a grapevine. Yeah, a little bit more. It's, it's in the same family as a cucumber. It's a okay, squash. Yeah. And the okay. yellow flower is someplace. Kristen, are these too dark? No. Look at that. Are these fun? Yeah. 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 There's I'm many good. flowers back here if you want to get a picture of okay. them. I can help you find them. I'm finding a lot of them. So anyway, this is one of our favorite, one of my favorite. It's actually very common, grows throughout our area. It tastes just like cucumber. Yeah, here's another nice one for a picture taking up opportunity with the, the trees. They're good, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, All right, we're heading on. I gave you your stack, you're always <laughs> about to right? <laughs>